The wait is almost over. This weekend, it's Paris Roubaix! I couldn't be more excited about this weekend. We have been starved of the hell of the North now for two and a half long years. We have. Uh, last time it took place on the 14th of April 2019. That was the 117th edition of the race. And back then, it was Philippe Gilbert who won the men's race. And, well, there wasn't a women's race then. But that is about to change because this Saturday, the 2nd of October, 125 years after the first men's race, it's the inaugural Women's Paris-Roubaix. Both races had been scheduled to take place on the same Sunday in April, but after the organisers were forced to postpone it, they chose to make it a full weekend of action rather than just the one day. Which I think is a brilliant move, Me too. isn't it? Because it means you can all enjoy both races fully and we get two, two days of action rather than just one. So happy days, basically. Right then, coming up, we will be going through the route for both races, the riders to watch, and of course, we will be predicting who becomes king and queen of the cobbles. Before we get on to all of that, though, a reminder that you can, of course, catch all the action live and on demand on GCN+. Plus. You can. Now, unfortunately, whilst the men's race is live for all 258 kilometres, the women's race is only live from 15.15 15 local time. At that point, they will have around 60 k of the 116 kilometres race remaining. Now, unfortunately, there is nothing we can do about that. We just take whatever is provided to us by the organisers. Uh, meanwhile, the men's race coverage starts at 10.55 local time on Sunday. Our rights are different for both races as well, with the women's race available worldwide except for Canada, China and New Zealand, whilst the men's will be available throughout Europe plus the Asia Pacific, except for China, New Zealand and Japan. Mm. Now on top of the live coverage, we will also have our pre and post race breakaway shows hosted by Orla, who will be joined by Danny Rowe and Magnus Bagstedt for the women's race, Adam Blythe and myself for the men's. We'll also have short highlights for you if you don't have all the time in the world to watch it. But if you do, Make sure you do watch it all. Right, uh, let's move on to the courses now. We will start with the men's because the women's is basically the last 116 kilometres of that route. The men's race starts in the town of Compagne and the first part is all on tarmac roads. It is, and it's here where we'll see the breakaway try to form. However, that process seems to have taken longer and longer over the years, doesn't it? With Paris Bay being one of the few races where you've got a real chance of a decent result if you get yourself up the road early. And that is mainly because you're not having to make the constant sprints and accelerations to get onto the pave sectors in a good position. There are 30 of those in all, totaling 55 kilometres. So that is a lot of fighting. Mm. The first of them this year comes in Troisville at Anchy, 96 kilometres into the race. Mm. Uh, there was a crash on this, rate, this sector the last time the race took place, and that meant that many riders were already on the back foot with 160 k's, or 100 miles, still remaining. From there, the cobbles come thick and fast. There is never more than eight kilometers between any two consecutive sectors. And it's not long before the first four-star sector arrives at Quivy saint piton Which is the equal longest of the race at 3,700 meters. Now this was the penultimate sector of cobbles used on stage four of the 2015 Tour de France, won by Tony Martin. But coming where it does in Paris-Roubaix, we're not expecting huge fireworks there, are we? But at the same time, given how early races seem to kick off these days, you just never know. You don't, do you? And there are a further eight cobblestone sectors to be ridden before the first five-star one comes along, and it's the most famous of them all, the Trué d'Arenberg, or the Forest of Arenberg, the most brutal 2.3 kilometers that road cycling has to offer. It's impossible to tell just how rough those cobbles are from TV coverage or even photos, but those of you who've had the fortune or indeed misfortune to actually ride it, will be well aware of just how gnarly and how, quite frankly, frightening the Arenberg is. It is frightening, isn't it? It you is, see yeah. Those cobblestones up close. And even if you have ridden it before, you forget just how bad it is until you go back and do it again. And just are reminded about how difficult it is. <laughs> Now, this is where a lot of people say that Paris-Roubaix actually started, which I guess is an old cliche, but there's no doubt that the fight into the Arenberg is not a lot different to the fight before a bunt sprint. Fast, chaotic, and also dangerous. They're going to be hitting those cobblestones at over 60 kilometers per hour, and that actually 
is the reason that I hope for another dry Paris Bay this weekend. Yeah. I don't want it to be wet. No, I know what you mean. There is nothing quite like seeing the wet, muddied phrases from a wet Roubaix, but it's dangerous enough as it is, without adding in that extra element of slippery, muddy cobbles. Either way, though, by the end of the Arenberg, the men's race still has 93 kilometres and 18 sectors yeah, remaining. Yeah, there's a long way still to go, isn't there? Yep. Uh, the women's race, meanwhile, starts with three laps of a circuit around Dinan, but joins the men's route on the 17th sector at Ornain, one Digny. Now that means we're plunged right into the thick of it, as this is the other 3.7 kilometre cobbled stretch, which is also given a four-star rating. From there, it's about 30 k's to the second of the three five-star sectors, mont en pavel 3 k long, and a section of road that's often muddy, even when there's been little rain, due to the tractors that regularly use the road. I've been told it's sugar beet harvesting time at the moment. Is it? So it's, uh, yeah, so it's extra Great bad. Great fact. Thanks. <laughs> uh, now, we know the organizers and Les Amis du Paris Bay, which is like the kind of the unofficial committee that sort of look after the cobbles, um, have been busy cleaning the worst sectors of cobbles as best they can. But nevertheless, we can be almost certain that this one is going to be grimy. And most of the previous ones as well. Yeah, probably, yeah. And probably quite a selective sector as well, although with just 48 kilometres remaining after it, it's not going to be a huge group that will go into it in the first place. In fact, on numerous occasions over the past few years or the last couple of decades, the winning rider has already gone clear by the time they get to that particular sector. Yeah, and that is a long way to go solo. It, it is, is. yeah. Um, between there and the finish, there are still 10 sectors. The most notable of those is the Carrefour de l'Arbre, which is the only five-star sector of the women's race. The pavé here is just as gnarly as Arenberg, quite frankly, uh, but the corners on this one mean that you can't go quite as fast. It's especially if it's wet. Which makes it even harder, doesn't it? Because the faster you go over cobbles, the easier they feel, don't they? Yeah, which is, explains why we find them almost impossible. <laughs> but... Yes, we basically jump from one cobblestone, get bumped off and land on the next one, don't we? Uh, but yes, anyone in the front group who's not wanting to wait for a sprint will need to use this sector to really put the hurt on everybody else they're with. Yeah, there are 15 kilometres and three sectors to go by the time they exit the Carrefour. Groussant, Willems, Hem, and finally, the easy 300 metre Roubaix sector with just 1,400 metres to go. Mm. I'm not sure anything is easy by that particular no. point in the race, but yeah, they are pretty smooth, as is the final few hundred metres into the famous Roubaix Velodrome. Now, that is a site that would hold little significance in the world were it not to host the finish of this legendary race, but as it is, the Velodrome is one of the most recognisable and legendary places in our world of pro cycling. Yeah, who will arrive there first? Well, let's start talking about the riders, shall we then? Uh, starting with the man who will have the number one on his back for the men's race. Philippe Joubert, which does seem quite strange because it's a long, long time ago. Yeah, he won, it does it, really? feel like a long time ago. It does. It? Um, anyway, he'll be heading up uh, a Lotto Sudal team that also includes John Degenkolb, who was the winner in 2015. Joubert and Degenkolb are amongst five former winners that we are expecting on the start line, but none of them will start as a big, big favourite. Uh, those other ones, though, are Peter Sagan, winner in 2018, Greg van Avermaet from 2017, and Nicky Terpstra, who won back in 2014. Yeah, apparently Terpstra was the last solo winner of Roubaix. Was he? Apparently, yep. Did Fact number two, that. yeah. Um, so if they aren't the big favourites, who are? Well, you've got to say it's the usual suspects, haven't you? Wout van Aert and Mathieu van der Poel. And now Wout van Aert does have a bit of experience in this race. He rode in 2018 and 2019, finishing 13th and 22nd, which doesn't sound great, but he was hampered by bad luck on both of those occasions. For van der Poel though, this is his debut and I'm very excited about oh, it. Oh yeah. I think it's quite fair to say that he'll be quite at home at this particular race, even though he is a newbie to it. There are still a few question marks over his back injury from the Olympic mountain bike event, although one of those questions is just how serious it actually was. <laughs> uh, but he did make the final selection at the World Championship, so you'd have thought he'd be up there in the mix. Yeah, it didn't look like a race that would be too forgiving on your back, that one, did it, The really? World Championships, no, quite no. a few accelerations there. There were indeed. Um, now, he'll be there or thereabouts for sure, won't he? Um, and knowing the way he races, he'll either take a spectacular win or be relatively anonymous, you'd think. Um, but there doesn't seem to be like an in-between for Van der No, Paul, you're right. He's either winning in a manner that you would never expect anybody to be able to win, or not really there at all. Is no. He? Meanwhile, for Van Aert, I guess it's a really big opportunity to make up for the disappointment of last Sunday. There, by his own admission, he showed that he is human, 
But his form can't have deserted him already, can it, after that Tour of Britain? No, I wonder whether last weekend it was the weight of a nation on his shoulders that was just too much. Too much for even his muscled quads <laughs> to bear. I guess, though, the biggest problem for both of those riders is the collective might of the De Kerning Quickstep squad. Askren, Stebar, Seneschal, Lampart, Ballerini, Kaiser and Tim de Klerk. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with, as they always are in the Cobbled Classics, and they'll be trying to play their usual numbers game by getting themselves on the front foot and therefore putting every other team on the back foot. Yeah, Trek Sega Fredo also going to be fielding a strong team with Mass Pedersen and Jasper Stuyven, their leaders both of whom more than capable in the long cobble classics, whilst Ineos will be looking to Dylan Van Baarle to back up his excellent ride from last Sunday. It's a shame, isn't it, that Tom Pidcock's not riding? And in fact, I'm not entirely sure why he is skipping it, but nevertheless, they've got some other strong rides in the form of Moscon, Rowe and Kwiatkowski. Yeah, and they've also got disc brakes now, haven't they? Yes, they have, uh, but then so does everybody else. <laughs> Here's hoping that Ineos Grenadiers don't lose Paris-Roubaix because of a slow wheel change. Oh, yeah. Uh, EF Education Nippo uh, having a stellar end to their season, uh, and it's Michael Volgren who's played a large part in that. He will start as their leader, um, whilst it will mark the final race in the long career of Mitch Docker, who's been uh, forced to prepare for the race in the style of Matt Heyman after fracturing his elbow in the Benelux Tour. Um, what a way to bow out, though. So uh, good luck to Mitch, and hopefully he does as well as Matt Heyman did after uh, riding Zwift for six weeks before Paris. I think he'd be quite Quite pleased if he finished two places behind where Matt Heyman did. I think he uh, would, yeah. Harry uh, now, one man I have big hopes for on Sunday is Niels Pollitt, the big German of Bora Hansgrohe. He was runner-up at Paris Bay to Philippe Gilbert back in 2019 when it was last run. Uh, this time, he will be teammates with Peter Sagan, though. But of the two of them, I actually think it should be Pollitt that should be team leader, co-team leader perhaps. But he's so big and so strong, this race suits him perfectly. It does, yeah. We haven't seen that much of Sagan in that kind of... No, he wasn't good at the world, was he? No. Anyway, uh, another team with strength in numbers is Bahrain Victorious. Cobrelli, Mohoric and Hausler. You'd imagine the Australian is going to be in a supporting role, wouldn't you? But given that Mohoric has only ever raced Paris Bay once and Cobrelli has never raced it, I don't know, we tend to give Hausler a free role, wouldn't it? He's done this race, what, 13 times? Before bit, now, yeah. Bit of experience. They've got Marcel Zieberg as well, who's done it 13 times, and Marco Haller. I don't know how many times he's done it, but they've got a lot of experience. But like you said, the two team leaders that you'd imagine they'd have on paper have hardly done it, once yep. between them. Uh, of all the riders on the start, incidentally, only Immanuel Eviti has more experience than uh, Heinrich Hausler and also Marcel Seberg. I think this is going to be his 15th or 16th start in the race. Wow. Incredible. That's a lot of cobbles, that, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, right, other riders to watch out for include the ever-consistent Alexander Kristoff of UAE Team Emirates, Stefan Kung and Arnold Demar of Groupama FTJ, Mike Turnison, teammate to Van Aert at Jumbo Visma, Jasper Philipson, teammate of Van Der Poels, who's won his last four-day races on the trot. Yes, that's quite the record. I'm not sure Does... if anyone's won four one-day races in succession. I'm sure they have, but not in recent times, I'd hasten to guess. Mm. Uh, none of those races that he won, though, were quite like Paris-Roubaix. No. But well, Denan uh, had some cobbles, didn't well, it? Well, it did, but it was also sort of a bunch sprint. In well, the yeah, well. After won. After won, but there's no doubt that that is a man on form right now. Uh, watch out, too, for Seth Van Mark of the Israel Startup Nation, a man who's come so close on so many occasions to winning a cobbled monument, uh, but always falling slightly short. Kirkalera, Os, Malia, Narsen, Dillier, Turgis, Haller, Nizzolo, Campenarts, Van der Horn, Aikoff, Connor Swift and Laporte are also worth mentioning, too. If only so that if they win, We've actually mentioned them on the preview show. <laughs> right then, on to the women's race. And of course, we have no previous winners and no previous performances to go on. So picking a winner in a race so different to all the others on the calendar could be quite difficult. However, based on current form and their characteristics as riders, we will speculate nonetheless. We will. And after much deliberation, we have decided that Ellen van Dijk is the woman to beat on mm. Saturday. She's strong, powerful, great time trialist, of course, world champion now in that discipline. And she's on great form, and more than at home, on the cobblestones. Agreed. And she's also got a very strong team at Trek Sega Fredo with Dignan, Longo Borghini. I'd love to see van Dijk take the win. She's often working for other riders, but this race does seem to suit her perfectly, doesn't it? it? Does, yeah. um, Lotte Kopecky of Live Racing will also be licking her lips at the thought of racing Paris Bay. As a Belgian, she's grown up riding and racing on cobbles. And it feels like she's due a huge win at the moment, and it could very well be on Saturday. It's and coming soon, isn't it? win could there be? Well, yes, the inaugural edition. Uh, meanwhile, SD Works, who start almost every race as the big favourite, aren't 
in my opinion. You may well disagree at home, but they've got Vandenbroek Black, Peters and Dura as their main leaders. And I would have Vandenbroek Black down as a big favourite, were it not that she hasn't shown top form for a couple of months now. Now, albeit that a couple of months ago she did win a stage race, but still. True. Um, now, as you said, this is a very different race, haven't we? Kasia Nui Dome of Kanyastram has shown great form recently, although she's She's light, isn't yeah. she? It's going to be interesting to see how she fares amongst some of the other more powerfully built riders. And I guess also that's the same for Utrecht Ludwig of FDJ Nouveau Aquitaine as well. True. Well, we just don't know, do we? Anybody could win on Saturday to some degree, uh, including Annemiek van Vleuten, because she can do anything, as we all know. So it wouldn't be a surprise to see her take the win on Saturday. But her teammate Emma Norskar has also been great in the cobbled races this year, so watch out for her too. Yeah, and then, of course, there's the boss, Mariana Voss. She will probably be reeling, won't she, after her silver medal mm, she was um, disappointed. this last Saturday. This is one of the very few races she's never won, strangely enough, because <laughs> uh, she hasn't ever had the opportunity. But it would, it would feel fitting, it would feel right if she took this inaugural edition. Absolutely it? agree. Like it would also tale. be a shame if in the future there's a list of winners at the Women's Paris-Roubaix and Mariana Voss is not amongst those names. She deserves to be, doesn't she? She does. And now the woman that beat her last Saturday was Elisa Balsama of Valcar Travel and Service. I guess it'll be quite easy to spot her in those rainbow bands on Saturday. Yeah. Although how much we can still see after the first cobbled roads, I guess will depend on the conditions on the day, which we'll get onto later. Yeah, Team DSM have a strong team with Lorena Vibes, five for Georgie and Flauti Mackay. Don't count them out and don't also count out Marlon Rusa either. She has pulled out some fantastic performances She's on over great the last form, few yeah. weeks. And yeah. she was also top 10 at the Women's Tour of Flanders earlier on this year as well, so she mm. can definitely handle the cobbles. Sarah Roy has been dreaming of this race for a long time. She'll be leading Team Bike Exchange. And finally, we have Canyon Sram. Now, we've already mentioned Katja Nubidoma, but add the Barn Sisters and Elise Shabby into the mix, and you have a very strong team indeed. Yeah, right. Those are the riders. You've heard about the route. What about the conditions, the weather, as Dan just alluded to? Mm. Well, it's almost as hard to predict the weather as the wind, it seems, <laughs> judging by the fact the forecast has changed pretty much every day that I've looked at it over the last few days. But as we record this, at least, they're forecasting it to be dry until just after the finish of the women's race on Saturday, with rain all morning clearing up in the afternoon for the men's on Sunday. So the roads are likely to be wet but they're also forecasting strong southerly winds on both days though. And so with the route snaking northwards towards Roubaix, that's gonna mean a lot of cross tailwind and flat out tailwind. Paris Bay is always hard, but that's gonna make it even harder and even faster. I honestly cannot wait to watch. No. I don't think I'm gonna realize quite how much I've missed this race until it comes this coming Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, before we finish, it's time for our predictions, and I'm going to be courteous and let you go first this time, side because I normally nick the immediate. You do? Yeah. Um, well, that's good, because it means I can go for Wout Van Aert. I think he's going to do it. I mean, no, that's not true, actually. I have a feeling he won't do it, but he's got <laughs> to be the favourite, hasn't he? Uh, and in the women's race, I'm going to go with Voss. Again, heart overhead, perhaps, but... That You're going for one Belgian and one Dutch woman, yeah. whereas I'm going double Dutch. Go on. I mean, fairly obvious picks, but I'm going for Ellen van Dijk, who, as I mentioned before, yeah. is one of the big favourites, and also Mathieu van der Poel. I know we said I'll either be anonymous or he'll win spectacularly, and I'm just hoping for a spectacular Mathieu van der Poel victory. Oh, I think there's don't a question get any mark over his head. I still think, like... There are question marks, but there have been question marks in the past, and he's gone on... An won something amazing. That is true. He is Matthew van der Poel, isn't he? Yeah. He can do anything. Either way. I don't really care who wins. I cannot wait to watch the winning kind of thing. <laughs> no. Anyway, before we finish with this preview video, let's now hear from some of the other GCN presenters as to their picks. There it goes, my prediction for the Paris-Roubaix. Marian Boss for the women's and Matthew van der Poel for the men's race. <laughs> Hello from Germany. Yeah, I think more German is not possible. And here are our predictions for Paris-Roubaix. I think for the men's race, Mathieu van der Poel is finally back in form and will win it. And for the women's race, I predict Marianne Vos after her second place at the World Championships. I go for Ellen van Dijk for the women's race and uh, Wout van Aert will take revenge from his uh, World Championships and take the couples on Paris-Roubaix. Bye bye! Wout van Aert is going to win Paris-Roubaix. Yes, I think so. 
Okay, my prediction, Perry roubaix I am going for Wout Van Aert and Ellen Van Dyke. Hank. Oh, now this is tough. I'm actually going to do a bit of a uh, curveball. I'm going to chuck in Tom Pidcock. Not only has he won the mountain bike, but I think he's uh, he's in good shape. And then for the women, I'm going to go for Mariana Voss. I mean, you can't bet against her. Hi, everyone. Don't trust the sunny day we have today. It doesn't mean it will not rain this weekend in Roubaix, and hopefully it will, hopefully for us, not for the riders. I would bet on the women's first ever edition of Roubaix, the victory of Christine Majerus, specialist of cyclocross. She is my favorite. On the men's race, I would bet on a French rider, Florian Seneschal, because he's a local one, and he showed in the world that he's in good shape. Well, there you go. I mean, it, it can't get any worse than our predictions for last weekend, can it? Because I don't think anybody went for Elisa Balsamo or indeed the reigning world champion, Julien Alaphilippe. But yeah. then why change the habit of a lifetime here at GCN? That was a miss. Balsamo perhaps was a yeah, surprise. excusable. In hindsight, Alaphilippe, <laughs> not so much. Uh, anyway, right, don't forget, Put it in your diaries, 13.45 BST on Saturday for the start of the live show before the women's race. And then bright and early at 9.40 BST for the men's race on Sunday. And before you get there, make sure you leave your predictions for both races in the comment section down below. We're in for a real treat this weekend, we are. aren't we? We'll we see are. you then, everybody.